These protests have already have a profound political impact with politicians across the spectrum denouncing President Trump for last night's move to clear protesters near the White House so that he could stage a photo op in front of a damaged historic church. And it comes at a time when eight states in Washington, D.C. are voting in primaries. Let's talk about this now with Ben Colton. He is senior research analyst at Beacon Policy Advisors. Ben, it's good to see you again. Um, look, I want to talk to you about what the president um, did yesterday. He's painting himself as, quote, the law and order president. He had that photo op in front of that historic church, got a lot of backlash for it. Do you think this actually hurts his chances of getting reelected? Uh, thanks, Alexis, for having me on. I don't think it makes a difference right now one way or the other. I think when you're looking at the polling today, Trump, his approval rating is at 43%. On January 1st, it was at 43%. In between that time, there was the third Senate trial, in, uh, impeachment trial in American history. There was the gravest health pandemic in over 100 years. And there was also the greatest economic contraction and unemployment spike since the Great Depression. And now we have these most serious public uh, riots in decades. And so one way or the other, Trump is trying to kind of ameliorate his base, seeing like he is the law and order president. And so it will play well with them, but that's not kind of the group that he needs to focus on. He needs to focus on kind of the undecided voters, which are younger uh, minorities and more independent voters. And it's unlikely that this new law and order focus will make much of a difference. How is, is Biden gaining any traction with those with those critical voters, those younger voters, also suburban women? And it looks as though this time around, Trump may actually lose the older vote, something that he had in 2016. Yeah. So Biden, for all the criticisms on Twitter, is he's in one of the strongest positions for a challenger in modern polling history. You know, he continues to lead Trump by six points nationally, which is the same that he did at the beginning of the year. And so he's always had a uh, popularity among older voters, which he's leading uh, among Trump. Now, he does have some problems with younger voters and among non-white voters as compared to Hillary Clinton four years ago. But it's tough to see that these voters, when push comes to shove, will end up voting for Trump. And he's done, Biden's done a much better job consolidating the anti-Trump vote compared to Clinton four years ago. Ben, the, uh, the rising civil unrest that we, we are seeing uh, in the country right now, does that change the long-term prospects for the stock market? Uh, I'd say the market right now is an amoral entity in respects to the plight of kind of the racial and socioeconomic injustices. There are a lot of comparisons to the riots and protests from 1968, coming from kind of the Vietnam War, the Martin Luther King assassinations, and a declining distrust in government. And yet in 1968, the economy grew at nearly 5%, unemployment rate was below 4%, and the S&P 500 gained 8% for the year. So I don't think the market today sees... Uh, the, the protest as an economic issue, more of a moral and political event. Now, granted, compared to 1968, we are dealing with the kind of a health pandemic and an economic recession. And as, a, is, as the economy tries to reopen in cities like Washington, D.C., continuing protests beyond one week could certainly damper the, the reopening process and put kind of pressure for increased unemployment. And so those were things to look for in the coming weeks ahead. All right. So their longevity is what you're saying could actually turn these protests and riots uh, possibly into an economic event. But I want to talk about these primaries that we have going on today. Uh, one of them could be the end of a career for nine term Iowa GOP Congressman Stephen King. I'm wondering which races uh, do you find to be pivotal today? Which ones are you really watching, Ben? Yeah, certainly there are some races where the, the national GOP does not want to see kind of their, their current brethren uh, continue, especially Steve King. I guess the one race that I'm focusing on is the primaries in Pennsylvania. And we know Pennsylvania will be a battleground state uh, in November, but COVID-19 has kind of uh, changed the, the, the operations of elections, particularly with mail-in uh, ballots. And that in Pennsylvania, we saw an 18-fold increase in the number of requested mail ballots from four years ago. And you know, poor execution and uncounted ballots could be an alarm bell for November when there will be undoubtedly an increase in the surge in absentee ballots and a potential reemergence of coronavirus in, in the fall. And we know that mail-in ballots has been a bone of contention for our president as well. Ben Colton, Senior Research Analyst at Beacon Policy Advisors, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me.